I'm Scott Wapner, and here are tonight's top three trades. Mutiny at Research in Motion. Investors have already jumped ship, and now a top insider is raising red flags about the company. We've got the interview coming up next. Plus, we're going to move on, talk about kicking somebody when they're down. Research in Motion, already down 33% this month, is now making more headlines, and yes, it's more bad news. A letter written from within the company intended for RIM's CEOs, that's right, they have two CEOs, has been published to the public by our next guest, Jonathan Geller, founder and editor-in-chief of the Boy Genius Report. He joins us from 30 Rock. Jonathan, it's good to have you. Thank you so much. How do we know the letter's real? It's from a very high-level source who I've had for a very long time. Letter is absolutely authentic. So you've uh, you've absolutely confirmed it. One hundred percent. Yeah. What uh, what kind of reaction has this uh, stirred up today? Well, you know, I mean, it stirs up emotions. You know, Rim is like you said down. They're having trouble. They're going through a transition period. Um, and you know, what's amazing is Rim actually did respond to the letter just over an hour ago. So they published on their corporate blog a response, which is very defensive. They didn't address any of the points in the letter. They just basically said, you know, we're growing internationally, we're going through this transition period, we're almost done, but they really didn't address it at all. So it's pretty incredible. Let's go through to the response. We'll put it up on our screen. I'll give you a, a, a gist of basically what Research in Motion is saying. Particularly difficult, they say, to believe that a high-level employee, in quotes, they say, in good standing with the company, would choose to anonymously publish a letter on the web rather than engage fellow executives. Fair to say that the senior management team at RIM is nonetheless fully aware and aggressively addressing both the company's challenges and its opportunities. Point, the point here, Jonathan, really, is there are numerous challenges. Uh, you know, whether it's the right move to, to send a letter like this or not, it, it, it really doesn't, doesn't make a difference. The, the fact of the matter is it brings to light challenges that investors, traders have obviously thought about this company. Stock's down 50% year to date. Absolutely, but you know, this is sort of the last resort. This has been the case for a number of years at RIM. So this is sort of the quote unquote breaking point where a senior executive had to come to me and say, Jonathan, I want to publish this on BGR because we, I can't speak up. If Dr. I speak Evil, up, yeah. I'll get fired. Jonathan, you know? I had a quick question. Um, a lot of us that scan social media for uh, signs that people are going to be moving noticed years ago, of course, and this continued throughout right up until today, that a lot of postings on LinkedIn and so forth are people looking to leave RIM and go to places like Apple. So in other words, there's been a pretty significant drain of sales of some of the developers and so forth. C have you heard much about that as far as, you know, that their talent, their bench has been drying up over the last couple of years? You know, that's definitely the case. There's actually two more letters that uh, will be published tomorrow on BGR. And uh, in one of them, you know, they literally say that, you know, headhunters are circling. Um, you know, this is an issue where we've had such smart people that are actually leaving because of all the red tape, because of how long it takes to get something done, because of the lack of innovation, the lack of motion, uh, so to speak. So absolutely, that's definitely the case. You're saying that you have two more letters in hand from yep. the same person that you'll publish tomorrow? No, they're from two different uh, employees in, in, two different, uh, in two different positions. How, how high up within Research in Motion, I, obviously you're not going to tell us who sent the letters to you, but how, how high up, can you give us an idea of, I mean, are we talking from the C-suites? Um, I mean, we're, we're talking pretty high up. We're not talking about a regular employee. Yeah, interesting. All right, Jonathan, thanks. Thank you so much. Guys, what do you think about well, this, Joey T? The, the problems for RIM are structural. They're structural, and I don't know if they could be changed in the next couple of quarters. Think about it. You have the back-to-school season coming up. What is RIM competing against other smartphone makers with? They're competing with a product that they had this time last year. They don't have a new product. BB7 is not going to be ready. The ONX operating system, not ready just yet. So when you look at their smartphone market share, think about this. At the beginning of 2010, 20% first quarter of 2012, that number is going to whittle all the way down to 10%. You begin to ask yourself the structural problem that RIM faces. Is the platform, number one, marginalized, and is this the next bomb? How long can Research in Motion survive as a standalone company, guys? I mean, they, they, they seem well, to be I spinning mean, their th wheels. There is a bullish case for RIM, and I'm not long What is it? The, no, the bullish case is the QNX software. That is an excellent piece of software. It's in almost every Ford vehicle out there. So if you take a longer-term view and you say, we're going to have wired and connected cars, and it's more than just what's in your hand, then QNX is poised for that. That could take five years. That could take 10 years. That's the problem. And clearly by this letter, the management team isn't there to execute that. And the other part of it is that how do you incent an employee to stay with a company like this when their stock options are just getting vaporized every buck that the stock drops? I mean, put up the chart, and as Gartman would say, instead of going from the lower left to the upper right, it does the opposite. So it's a downward slope like this, 
it's almost impossible to hold on to employees and certainly nearly impossible to lure in new talent when you've got a stock doing that. Let's bring in Mike Coe on the options desk. Mike, a juicy letter stirs up a great story, and that stock tells its own story, doesn't it? It, it certainly does. And, you know, to Brian's point, I mean, he's talking about QNX as an operating system. We should actually look back and re recall that one of the things that Palm kept talking about when they were on, on the ropes was they were going to have a great new operating system. They had great new products. You know, this is definitely a business space where you actually have to deliver. Five years, 10 years? No, no, no. You don't get that kind of time. This is a situation. Take a look at what happened to Palm.